Hello, welcome back to my next five meals for under £25 from Aldi. I'm going to talk you through some gorgeous summer meals that you can make for you and your family this summer, all for a really budget price. I'm going to list all the ingredients and the prices based on Aldi prices. Along and talk you through the recipes. So I really hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe so you see more of these and yeah. First up we have my honey and chipotle slow cooker pulled chicken crunchy wraps. Um, the slow cooker is definitely for summer as well as autumn and winter and I highly recommend you make this dinner. It's one of those ones you can sort of pop in the middle of the table and everyone helps themselves and everyone really enjoys it. If you're not keen on spicy food then just swap the chipotle out for barbecue seasoning which is easily found in um, Aldi. So the first thing you want to do is start warming up your slow cooker and throw your chicken thigh fillets in the slow cooker. What I love about this recipe is definitely a dump and go. I made this in the morning, I got home at night and then I just prepped the salad and the wraps and it was ready to go. It was so delicious. So dump your chicken in the slow cooker with some olive oil and your seasoning. Whilst that's in the slow cooker, you can prepare the other bits that are going to go in the slow cooker. Um, so I always add grated carrots into my pulled chicken recipes because it really helps the whole meal to go a lot further. It's that added bit of fiber that you need. It's an added bit of sweetness. And yeah, it's budget. It's just a budget way of adding more vegetables. I peeled and grated two large carrots and I'm going to throw those in to the pulled chicken. I'm also going to slice up some red onion and throw the red onion in to the slow cooker. We're using a couple of red onions in today's recipe. Some red onion I'm saving for when you serve up the dish just because you want some crunch in your wrap with the other bit. So throw in my carrots, my onions. I'm also going to throw in some stock paste. Some of this stuff is just stuff I have in the fridge. The good thing about this recipe is kind of like throw loads of stuff in and it seems to work. So um, I'm throwing chicken stock paste in. If you only have chicken stock cubes that's absolutely fine because you're going to be adding some hot water anyway. So throw in chicken stock, my some tomato puree, lots and lots of garlic and there we go. Everything is sort of ready to go. I'm also going to add in a big squeeze of honey and stir it all together and you're just going to leave it. I actually cook on low and slow for the day. You can cook on high. Mine was left in the slow cooker for about six and a half hours and um, if you're cooking on high just make sure it doesn't get dry. Just keep checking it if it needs it. Just add a bit of hot water from the kettle and this is it. It's sticky, it's spicy, it's delicious. The chicken is falling apart at the seam. It's such a delicious weekday meal that you could so easily make, which feels just, just feels like you've made more effort than you actually have. Um, so to serve up, I love serving it in wraps with some cheese, some salad, and a little bit of rice. I know it's like the double carb situation, but the rice does actually soak up the juices and it just makes it like a bit more of a burrito. It's really delicious. So I'm decanting all of the chicken out of the slow cooker into a bowl. As you can see, there's absolutely tons. The vegetables definitely make this dish go a lot further. We had so much left over, it was unbelievable. Um, it goes great on a jacket potato the next day. So yeah, it's, it's a really good dish to make for a big family. And there we have it, some salad, some wraps, some rice. Um, you can use whatever cheese you want. I just happened to have mozzarella in the fridge and I used mozzarella, which went really well because mozzarella melts just so deliciously over food. So yeah, I really hope you enjoy this one. It's such a budget recipe, but I feel like it's one of those ones that you just have to have throughout summer. Thank you. 
Okay, this is one of my most highly requested recipes. I make it sometimes and post it on Instagram and I get so many messages. It's my mushroom lemon parmesan tagliatelle pasta. Can I just say, I actually think it's a necessity for everyone to make this at least once. It is one of the cheapest meals you could possibly make that literally tastes like a restaurant quality meal. When I say it's like as cheap as making sort of beans on toast type meal, it's like that, but it is so restaurant worthy, it's unbelievable. So first things first, you want to get your tons and tons of mushrooms. Um, obviously mushrooms really whittle down when they're being slowly fried. So throw in as many mushrooms as you could possibly fit into your pot. Um, chestnut mushrooms really do work the best for this. They've just got such a nice nutty, wholesome flavor. So wash and slice those and then you're going to fry them in olive oil. Fry them just slowly, not too quickly because you really don't want things to start burning. As this is such a quick dish, you actually want to already start cooking your tagliatelle pasta. Here's me cooking enough tagliatelle pasta for 17,000 people, even though it was just for me, Orin, and Lawrence that day. But hey ho, I am a pasta queen. I love lots of pasta and it actually is so delicious cold the next day as a sort of pasta salad. So yeah. Um, and then you want to, as your mushrooms have whittled down and they're nice and soft, you want to chop up your garlic into big fat chunks or you can mince it and you want to chuck it into the pot um, just to slowly start softening. The smells that are coming from that pot right now are insane. You then want to get your washed and unwaxed lemon. Unwaxed is so important because the wax is really not good for you. You do not want to be using lemon zest if you've got waxed lemons. So buy unwaxed lemons and you want to, and then you want to grate the zest of a lemon into the pot with the cooking mushrooms and garlic and just slowly keep frying all of that together. Then add the juice of one whole lemon into that pot as, you're, um, as I'm preparing the other bits. I'm just washing and trimming up all of my parsley at the moment. I then go in and add the zest, a little bit more zest uh, from the lemon and some more lemon juice from the second lemon and just let that cook for a while. It's going to taste really tangy at this point but the um, cream and the cheese sort of take that, oh, I don't know, it just works so well. So you're going to add in your double cream into the dish and just stir that for a while. And then you want to add your tagliatelle. It has to be a little bit al dente. You don't want it to be too soft or overcooked really. Um, so add your pasta into the mushrooms, garlic and lemon juice mixture that you've made stir that round keep it on a low heat so it's all still cooking and the flavors are combining and then you want to start grating in lots and lots and lots of parmesan oh my gosh I, like my mouth is watering as I'm watching this I actually decant uh Orin's portion now because he's not keen on parsley so I don't add parsley to his but I add parsley to mine and Lawrence's a little bit of extra parmesan because can you ever have too much parmesan no that's the answer this is as i said one of the easiest and most restaurant worthy budget meals you could ever make for yourself i really really want you to make that and let me know what you think okay next up we're making a hot smoky chicken roasted tomatoes and mascarpone creamy pasta so this one is such a good weekday meal. It's one of those ones that everyone seems to love. So first things first, you want to start roasting your tomatoes. I have an actual obsession with tomatoes at the moment. They taste unbelievably good. It's not even just because I'm pregnant and I'm craving like anything fresh and tomatoey and apples and things like that. But the tomato, we're, we're obviously in tomato season, so cooking with tomatoes right now is a very good idea. So roast your tomatoes in a bit of olive oil, throw in some garlic cloves in there and some salt, and then you want to roast them slowly just so they don't burn. I'm then chucking my chicken into this cast iron pan. I really recommend investing in a cast iron pan, truly and utterly, you cook better with it, it can do so much more. 
um, quite often they're non-toxic and yeah I just really recommend I'll link a few down below this one's actually from Aldi I have another one that's a Le Creusier one which I got from home since so yeah I just really recommend them but uh, you want to start frying your chicken with the spices spices I'm using is lots and lots of paprika and chili flakes um, I also added a tiny bit of cayenne pepper into this and then once the chicken has fried quite well keep adding topping up with olive oil you want to add in your minced garlic now this is a tagliatelle dish and you're going to use the rest of the tagliatelle that you purchased from the shops but Laura, uh, sorry Oren's favorite pasta is the swirly whirly fusely so I made that because I didn't want him to not try this dish because he was gonna get fussy about the tagliatelle so I used a uh, few is it the curly fusely pasta and it was still delicious but anyway tomatoes are roasted you want to keep the juices from that tomato dish and the olive oil in the dish and you're going to pour it into on top of the chicken just for extra flavor so stir your roasted tomatoes through the chicken with the juices um oh gosh i just love tomatoes right now they just look so good <laughs> and then once that's cooked through just for a little bit you want to start adding your mascarpone cheese you're going to add a whole pot and let that slowly combine and melt within the chicken and tomatoes it's going to start becoming really really creamy uh, just to make it a little bit more saucy i add a large well probably about three tablespoons worth of the water that's cooking the pasta into this dish and um, yeah, it's nice starchy water, which just gives it a really nice creamy texture. And then you can start adding your pasta and combine all together. It's so delicious. One of those amazing weeknight meals that everybody tends to make. It does have quite a bit of heat in it because of the chili flakes and the cayenne pepper. So um, again, you can swap this for barbecue seasoning, you can swap it for just lots and lots of paprika and maybe some garlic um, seasoning of some sort. It's a very, very versatile and easy to do. It's one of the cupboard essential meals that you could sort of do per week. Just get yourself some mascarpone from the shops and um, you probably have most of the other ingredients in. So, um, as always, just top with a bit of <laughs> parmesan which is optional um adding a little bit of fresh basil into this is also a very good idea i did actually have some basil that i totally forgot about however um fresh basil in this is is really delicious Okay, next up we're making sweet and salty bacon and tomato salad. <gasps> this has been probably my craving <laughs> throughout pregnancy, but also it's just one where you take every part of this salad and you really sort of make an effort to make it as good as it can be. And then when you combine it together, it is a 10 out of 10 salad. As the weather's been so hot this week, um, just making yourself a salad for dinner is sometimes absolutely necessary. So the first thing you're going to do is start frying your bacon in a little bit of butter. So whilst that's frying, always fry slowly because you don't want anything to burn. So fry very slowly. I'm going to chop up all of my lettuce. Obviously I'm only making this for two people. So you will see me using only half the portions that I've actually um, designated in the ingredients list, but yeah. So you want to chop up all of your lettuce and you're going to put it in a colander and wash it thoroughly. I always spray a bit of white wine vinegar on my fruits and veggies when I'm washing, just because that's a really good antibacterial. Um, so let that wash and let it dry so that's why i always do it at the beginning of the process just so it dries as much as you can because you don't want like soggy lettuce and then you're going to get your tomatoes and you're going to prep them now 
tomatoes taste good all the time at the moment but a really good way of having tomatoes is to let them brine like sit in a sort of brine and um, it's a super simple step to do it requires leaving them for around 10 minutes but first things first you're going to chop in half your tomatoes and okay once your tomatoes are all laying down on a dish you want a dish with sides just because um you want to catch any of the juices you're going to smother it in black pepper um black pepper works really well and some salt what this does is take all the sharpness from a tomato and the tomato becomes unbelievably sweet it's just so good and drizzle some good quality olive oil on top of them and you're just going to let them rest like 15 minutes will do and whilst everything else is cooking and being made they are becoming very very sweet okay next up we're making the most stunning salad dressing again this is something you want to just put just that little bit of extra effort into and you're really going to level up your salad so the first thing you're going to do is roast your garlic in the oven um slow and low but until the garlic is really nice and soft and you can squish it with some olive oil and salt so whilst that's roasting just making up the rest of the dressing which is the mustard vinegar and some honey and some olive oil now i ran out of whole grain mustard and i ran out of apple cider vinegar so i used dijon and red wine vinegar they actually work just the same they were absolutely delicious so it's up to you you can um so yeah it worked out really well mix that all together with the olive oil and i'm not joking i actually just almost drank this like mustard i don't know why has become a little bit of a craving of mine um but i really this salad dressing is stunning so leave that to the side and wait for your garlic to finish cooking once your bacon is nice and crispy you want to put that on a plate to cool down because you're going to crumble that up over your salad and now we're going to start assembling our salad so get your tomatoes that have been oh they're so good i could eat that whole plate on its own um but they've been sweetening up on that plate and uh, pop them on top of your lettuce and then combine the lettuce and tomato just so it's quite even you also want the juices and oil from the tomatoes to go into the lettuce um, again just adding more flavor once the garlic is soft you want to take it out of the oven and you want to just as you can see smush it all together so delicious and you're going to add that into your little cup of seasoning stir that all together and start pouring it over your salad And then you can crumble your bacon on top of the salad. Now, I don't add any extra salt into the salad just because bacon is really salty as it is and the tomatoes had a little bit of salt on top. So what I'd really recommend is trying before you add any extra seasoning because I think if I added any extra salt to this, it would just be absolute overkill but the bacon is so salty compared to the really really sweet tomatoes and the sort of sweet dressing oh, this salad let me tell you is 10 out of 10 now i made it without the boiled eggs and the croutons because we were having this on the side of a different dish but to make it a meal just add in your olive oil toasted croutons and your boiled eggs at this stage and there you go, you have a full salad meal there. This is what I have generally about once a week at the moment with the boiled eggs and croutons. So good, really filling, but really perfect for a hot summer's evening. Okay, next up is the salmon avocado bagel brunch I make with balsamic glaze. This meal is so underrated. It's so good. It has everything you need. It's super filling, but super good for you. Um, and it's one of my favorites, especially in the summer months. I make this every single summer. I have done for the last sort of 10 years. And yeah, I really recommend it. So 
first things first we're going to roast our delicious tomatoes so again put them in a roasting dish with some with some olive oil salt and a bit of pepper and you just want them to roast nice and slowly again so whilst the tomatoes are roasting they tend to take the longest out of everything you can get working on everything else now i served this with scrambled egg it works really really well with poached sometimes lawrence has poached so it's up to you how you have it but i prefer scrambled and i add a little bit of cream into my scrambled eggs all the time it's just what i do <laughs> um but i start scrambling my eggs with some cream and butter and it's around two eggs per person with this then you want to start rolling up your smoked salmon i always get the mild and delicate just because i think that has the absolute best flavor uh, it's not too salty and it just works really really well with this dish you're then going to butter your toasted bagel it's up to you you can put this on um, some lovely sourdough these are actually sourdough bagels from m &S. i really recommend them but uh, we occasionally put this on like a big thick slice of sourdough and it is just as delicious um, so start plating up because most of this stuff is actually cold apart from the eggs and tomato so slice up your avocado and put your smoked salmon on then go to serve up your scrambled eggs and once your tomatoes are ready start serving those up again the tomatoes have already been salted but I do add some salt and pepper onto the avocado and look how quick fills that meal it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to make super budget but so delicious and filling I always add balsamic glaze to this it goes so well with the tomatoes and avocado well it goes so well on the whole dish balsamic glaze is like a really nice sweet tangy glaze it's very hard to explain but just try it if you haven't because you might really really like it um and yeah it's just a great combo i really enjoy it i hope you've enjoyed today's meals if you have any questions about the meals let me know in the comments down below and i'll see you really soon for my next video bye